Right friends, let's continue our chronology of the right equality. We are at the first milestone, which is the Rawat case. And in this, we are looking at the two precedents that came before uh, the very famous Rawat case. The first one we have discussed in the previous video, decided on the 4th of December 1950, the Chiranjit Lal case. And in this video, we are looking at the next precedent that was utilized in order to arrive at a verdict in the Rawat case, that is the FN Balsara case decided by the Supreme Court on the 25th of May 1951. <clears throat> we are of course in 1952 when we are dealing with Rawat, so we are looking at these two cases uh, from the past. The Balsara case is an absolutely fascinating one and I actually am starting to, I am beginning to regret not uh, making a separate video about it, but we will revisit this case in uh, future videos, that is a promise. The case stems from the Bombay Prohibition Act 1949, enacted by the Provincial Legislature of the uh, Bombay Province. This is of course pre-Republic, post-independence, yes, but before 26 Jan 1950. So there were no states, uh, there were provinces. And the Provincial Assembly of Bombay decided to impose prohibition in that province. Bombay province was of course massive, contained parts of present day Gujarat and Maharashtra. So uh, it, it housed a significant population um, and a significant percentage of that population was certainly consuming alcohol and that was banned by this enactment, the Bombay Prohibition Act 1949. Now history tells us that prohibition never works. Uh, it actually gives rise to black market drink and whatever. But as far as we are concerned, any such banning of alcohol results in a very juicy precedent uh, from the Supreme Court because that is what happened here. This one concerned citizen who also was uh, a trader in alcohol, Mr. F. N. Balsara, he approached the Bombay High Court and his uh, petition is very detailed. He claimed the right to possess, consume and use whiskey, brandy, wine, beer, uh, quite the connoisseur or Mr. Balsara, as well as medicated wine, or the cologne which also contains alcohol, etc. And to import and export across customs frontiers and to possess, consume and use any stock of foreign liquor, or the cologne, lavender water, medicated wines, medicinal preparations containing alcohol, basically as exhaustive a list as one could create. So uh, the idea of course being that you should cover everything when you're asking for a prayer in case you know that one thing gets left out and you are uh, unable to carry out its trade if the verdict comes out in your favor. The verdict did come out in uh, Mr. Balsara's favor, uh, by the way. <clears throat> Some of the arguments made by his uh, legal team before the Bombay High Court, uh, there are three main aspects and uh, we will not be discussing them in detail. Of course, we are going to deal only with the equality part of this. The first aspect was to do with the federal structure as imposed by the Government of India Act 1935, the precursor to our constitution. It also had a, uh, had a set of uh, subjects divided amongst the central government and the provincial governments that is the uh, union list and the state list and the concurrent list as we call them today after 26th Jan 1950. The Government of India Act 1935 called them the uh, dominion list and the provincial list respectively for the union and the state. Um, Balsara's claim was that uh, alcohol and other associated materials fell under a particular uh, entry in the dominion list and uh, the state of Bombay therefore, the province of Bombay did not have the authority to pass an enactment about it. As it turned out, there was uh, an entry in the provincial or the state list which allowed for legislation on alcohol. The union list or the dominion list entry was to do with trade in it. So it was um, not exactly a violation by the province of Bombay. Anyway, we will come to this in a future discussion where the lists are discussed by the Supreme Court. 
the next uh, argument by balsara was that this prohibition violated his right to carry out a profession if he was an alcohol trader an alcohol merchant uh, then it was his fundamental right to carry out that particular profession and this enactment was violating it you can imagine where that went with the supreme court uh, basically public order is a restriction uh, on the right to carry out a profession there are many other professions which are banned so that doesn't necessarily violate your right to profession as enshrined in article 191g and finally the third uh, argument made by mr balsara was that the bombay prohibition act 1949 violates the right to equality enshrined in article 14 which is of course crucial for us uh interestingly the bombay high court found that some of the sections of that enactment of the bombay prohibition act were indeed violative of the constitution while others were not so of course the um, suit was uh, the petition for mandamus was brought in by mr balsara after the constitution was in place so his arguments were about violation of the constitution and not necessarily violation of the government of india act otherwise there would not be a petition remember it uh, obviously was made under article 226 the um, uh, as i mentioned some of the sections were found to be violative of the constitution but the bombay high court also found that some of the sections were valid leaving both parties dissatisfied and this is an interesting scenario where both parties decided to appeal the judgment of the high court to the supreme court they both obtained a certificate uh, each of them under uh, article 132 clause 1 where we uh, in case uh, we are dissatisfied with the verdict given in our case by the bombay high court we ask for leave to appeal before the supreme court because that particular case deals with a matter of constitutional interpretation and that is where article 132 comes in they were uh, granted the certificate each of them by the bombay high court and one of the sections which the high court found to violate article 14 was this section 39 of the bombay prohibition act which empowered the provincial government to permit the use or consumption of foreign liquor on cargo boats warships and troop ships and in military and naval messes and canteens foreign liquor and its trade across the customs frontier as we saw in the previous slide was prohibited by this enactment but there was an exception in case of cargo boats foreign liquor was allowed warships allowed troop ships allowed a military mess or a canteen a naval mess or a canteen foreign liquor consumption possession use was allowed so obviously this is uh, a case of discrimination where it the law is being enforced unequally to certain people that law applies to certain other people it does not apply the bombay high court agreed with the argument and uh, found section 39 void what about the supreme court the supreme court's approach we can kind of guess um based on where we are in our chronology and what has happened so far the supreme court continued its stance of holding the legislation sacrosanct as far as possible the sanctity of every legislation every enactment was uh, maintained by the supreme court back in those days they had not obviously seen the worst of it and their eyes were opened later on but at this early stage of our republic the supreme court was trying to uphold as much as possible as many enactments as possible they obviously believed in the uh, principle of jurisprudence that the people's representatives are the best judges of what the people want what the people need may not know that they want it but actually need it and therefore the benefit of doubt is always provided to the legislature and not to the 
petitioner that was the supreme court approach and that is what they did this time as well they disagreed with the high court's interpretation the high court had interpreted that uh, yes the armed forces can be treated as a distinct class for certain purposes you are well aware that many fundamental rights are also not available to the armed forces so yes in certain cases in uh, for certain purposes the armed forces will be treated as a distinct class but enforcing prohibition does not fall under these certain purposes according to the bombay high court that is not what the supreme court held uh, justice fazal ali wrote this uh, judgment and it is a very lucid one and um, of course we have not often agreed with uh, whatever justice fazal ali uh, has uh, has stipulated in his many dissenting opinions so far in our uh, in our chronology but in this particular case you have no option but to agree with him it is impossible to disagree with what justice fazal ali stated maintaining the high morale of the armed forces was a crucial aspect of maintaining armed forces at all and so the classification made by the legislature was reasonable and not arbitrary the impugned provisions specifically section 39 did not violate the right to equality but it is instructive to actually read what justice fazal ali has written and i'm going to read it out because it really is a very nicely argued point the armed forces have their own traditions and mode of life conditioned and regulated by rules and regulations which are the product of long experience and which aim at maintaining at a high level their morale and those qualities maintaining at a high level those qualities which enable them to face dangers and perform unusual tasks of endurance and hardship when called upon to do qualities such as dash and courage unbreakable tenacity and energy ready for any sacrifice which should be unfaltering for long days together all very very valid points by these rules and regulations drinking among the forces is not prohibited but it is properly and carefully regulated the armed forces anyway have their own rules and regulations in place with regard to alcohol consumption uh, justice fazal ali continues it is easy to understand that the legislature chose not to interfere with the mode of life to which the forces have been accustomed lest such interference should affect their morale and lead to subterfuges which may prove unwholesome for their discipline and good behavior as we discussed any prohibition results in black marketing imagine prohibition in the armed forces if that results in some subterfuge imagine where that would take us imagine all the uh, unwholesome indiscipline and improper behavior that would result he continues besides when drinking is regulated among a class of persons by specific rules and regulations and drunkenness is made an offence as it is in the armed forces the relaxation of the law of prohibition in their case is not likely to produce the same evil that results uh, the same evil results as it may produce under other circumstances i find therefore nothing wrong prima facie in the legislature according special treatment to persons who form a class by themselves in many respects and who have been treated as such in various enactments and statutory provisions in my opinion therefore section 39 in so far as it affects the military and naval messes and canteens warships and troop ships cannot be held to be invalid he also had uh, an opinion about cargo ships where alcohol consumption was uh, allowed uh, as opposed to passenger ships yes there used to be passenger ships back in those days you had to sail all the way to uh, well wherever america or britain or wherever you were headed and not fly there flying was not very common so there were two classes of long distance vessels they were either passenger liners or they were cargo ships and alcohol consumption was not prohibited by this enactment on cargo ships once again justice fazal ali came up with the explanation that anyway it is a tiny group of people compared to uh, on a passenger ship where rowdy behavior might result in an all out riot whereas over here it's it's a it's a skeleton crew right it's five or 10 people and the uh, passenger liners were by definition uh, traveling at a much brisker rate of knots compared to 
cargo ships which had a very slow and languorous journey across the seas and therefore the time that they were away from their uh, loved ones and any other mode of entertainment was much longer in the case of cargo ships. So that classification was once again upheld by the Supreme Court. So once again we get to the same place as we had with the Chiranjit Lal case that yes classification is allowed. No classification does not necessarily mean discrimination if it has been reasonably defined and restricted to a well demarcated class of individuals or even one single individual as it was in the case of Chiranjit Lal. So if the classification has been made with reasonableness in mind, with a particular purpose in mind and it does not uh, hit unintended uh, members of society, then it is not a violation of the right to equality. So when is equality violated at all? We will come to uh, particular uh, particular cases. I promise you that it is it has been violated, and we will look at those aspects over the course of our journey through the history of the Supreme Court of India. That concludes our very short introductory discussion, almost on the F. N. Balsara case, a case which, as I said, we will revisit uh, sooner or later. We will continue with the right to equality chronology by finally arriving at the case that we are actually supposed to be discussing starting from the next video, the Rawat case. Hope you join me then. Bye-bye.